Ah. Here I have two cameras. One of them is a film camera and the other one is a digital camera, even though they both look pretty similar, apart from one's got silver bits and the other one's all black. But this is actually the digital camera. It's the new Nikon ZFC. It's an all singing, all dancing digital camera with eye focus tracking, vlogging capabilities and everything that you'd expect from a high spec digital camera. And this is my Nikon F3, which is a manual focus, manual everything film camera. Now, one of the reasons, in fact, probably the main reason that I bought this one was because it looks so good. And the look is modelled on Nikon's FM2 camera. And part of me has recently thought, well, if I'd have bought an FM2 camera, it probably would have saved me quite a bit of money. But maybe not in the long term if I'm buying film for a film camera. There are another two reasons why I've been prompted to ask myself this question, should I shoot film? One of them is that about this time last year, I decided to download a series of presets, film emulation presets for my post-production software. And I've realised that recently I've been using them more and more because I just like the look that different film stocks can provide. When you take a digital photograph and rely on the colours from the camera, yes, they're absolutely spot on, but with film, it just gave you a, a look. It gave different contrast, it gave different colour, and it just has a photographic look to it, rather than a straight digital photograph. And the other reason is I've recently been looking at the people that I follow on YouTube, and the majority of the photographers that I follow are film photographers. They don't tend to shoot digital very much, other than for filming their videos. So, all of these things have culminated in me asking this question, should I shoot film? So, the other week I headed out to a couple of my favourite places on the Yorkshire coast, Brunswick Bay and Port Mulgrave. I took both of these cameras with me and obviously I shot film with this one. I had a roll of Superior by Fuji 200 ISO and I took digital photographs obviously on this one and then applied my film presets afterwards just to compare and contrast. And the idea was to come up with a conclusion to this question. Now, if you're watching this video, then maybe you've asked yourself the same question, or maybe you'd like to know a bit more about how film presets work. Hopefully, over the course of this video, I will set you straight and give you a few pointers here and there. It's going to be filmed based on my influences, which tend to be American hipster film photographers on YouTube, and maybe a documentary by the Hairy Bikers. So, without further ado, let's cut to me fondling some film and see if we can come to any conclusions. When I arrived in Runswick Bay, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was perfect weather for photography. So I slipped a roll of Fuji Superior 200 in my F3, slotted both cameras around my neck and went out for an explore. In the photography business, having a digital camera and a film camera around your neck is known as having camera boobs. I'll let you come to your own conclusions on that one. My first port of call was the village of Runswick Bay itself with its quaint little curling corridors of beautifulness. As you can see, these first photographs are all using the digital camera presets, and don't get me wrong, I'm quite pleased with how they've come out but I couldn't really get very many film photographs because I tended to be shooting into the sun quite a bit, which doesn't tend to work very well when it comes to film. 
So I meandered my way down these beautiful little snickets and onto the beach where it was quite breezy. As you can see, I was struggling to keep my horizon line straight. And I headed to one of the best views in Runswick Bay, the beautiful boathouse and colourful boats that surround it. A great chance to get a comparison shot. Here's the film shot. And here's its equivalent using the digital preset. Not too much difference, a bit of difference in colour, as you can see, but I'm pleased with both. As I wandered further down the beach, a gentleman decided to show me up with my camera-laden aching neck by pulling out his light phone and just snapping away at the view. How easy is that? It was another classic view which I had to try out in both film and digital preset. Again, here I think I prefer the film shot better. It's just come out a bit warmer and a bit more contrasting, which I really quite like. A little bit further down the beach was this beautiful blue boathouse and with the light reflecting off the waves of the sea and the cliffs surrounding it, it was another perfect opportunity to get the camera out. First of all, I underexposed by mistake, but looking at the correct exposure, I actually quite like the underexposed one more. It just looks a bit more muddy and moody. This is a shot that I really quite like, with the reflecting light off the cliffs in the background. The sea then decided to come in and nearly block me off, so I scrambled over the rocks as quickly as I could and then went to find a tractor to smell. It was so good, I went in for another go. I think this one's a bit too warm, to be honest. Again, I prefer the natural film look. My final shot at Runswick Bay was probably my favourite that I took all day. A bit cliched, but still, I love those colours. My next port of call was the Curious Cove of Port Mulgrave. I was given the option of getting down to the beach via a staircase to nowhere or a rope ladder down a muddy slope. In the end, I opted for slipping down most of the way on my backside, but I eventually got down to the beach where I wasn't disappointed and it made that treacherous slope down well worthwhile. Here's another direct comparison. A nice moody vignetted film shot and then a less vignetted, less moody digital preset shot. Port Mulgrave is one of the quirkiest coastal locations I've ever been to with decaying makeshift boathouses, boats filling with water and chairs left out in the weather as if their owners have just got up and left. Of course, there was another tractor for me to smell, which I certainly wasn't complaining about. Ooh, that brings back some happy memories for my nose. The beautiful thing about Port Mulgrave is every single one of the boathouses which is made by hand is completely unique and this one here made of driftwood and some stones from the beach is probably one of my favourites and definitely one of the most photogenic. Then there's boats with rusting things, what's not to like about this place? 
I think these shots here are great examples of the different looks that you can get from different film stocks, be it actual film or digital presets. It goes to show that you can create a lot of mood and feeling in your shots through film, which you can't really necessarily get with a straight digital photograph. My time at Port Mulgrave was nearly over and I had to make the decision between wet feet from the tide coming in or making that treacherous journey back up the muddy slope with the rope, which at the end of it I had a slice of cake waiting for me, that's if I could make it all the way to the top in one piece. When I got back to the top of the cliff, the light was in its last throes of beautiful golden hour. So I finished my last shot on my roll of Fuji Superior with this beautifully lit gorse bush. It looks not bad in Kodak Gold either, but I still like the film look. Anyway, I did manage to get my cake after all, and it went down a treat. It was then time to hit the road and head home via the Yorkshire Dales which of course you have to do, don't you? So I suppose you're going to want me to come to some kind of a conclusion, even though that really wasn't any technical review, it was just me playing around, really. But in answer to that question that I posed right at the beginning of this video, should I shoot film, then the answer to that is most definitely yes. Some of the photographs, in fact the majority of the photographs that I took using my F3 on the Fuji Superior, came out much better in my opinion than the equivalent digital preset that I used on my digital photographs. But does that mean I'm going to ditch my digital cameras and shoot film all the time? No, it most certainly doesn't. I'm most definitely going to buy more rolls of film and put them through the F3 because Ultimately, I just love the look of the film photographs, and in this day and age, even the power of digital presets isn't going to come close to the real feel of film. It's just not possible. If you want to get film quality photographs, you're going to have to shoot them on film. There's not really a choice there. But when it comes to the costings, I mean, the film that I had on my trip to the coast, the Fuji Superior, cost £8, and then it cost another £12 to then develop that and scan it. And after a while, if you put in lots and lots of rolls of film through a camera, that's going to add up. We all know the advantages of digital over film. It's accessible, it's fast, you can have photographs processed and ready within an hour of taking them, depending on where you are. You can even edit pictures on the go on your phone these days if you wanted to. Which means that digital is definitely the way forward where it comes to photography. But I think there's always going to be a place for film. And I think it's always going to be there in the background because it's just... It feels like real photography. Digital sometimes just feels like you're pointing and shooting and you're getting a shot easier than you've ever got it before, which technically you are. But with film just slowing you down, making you think more, it's just a much more, what I would call a tactile process, which I really enjoy. So that's why I'm still going to take film photographs, but at the same time I'm going to continue to use my digital camera presets. They might not be absolutely spot on, but they still give you that look with the accessibility and the speed of digital. The other thing that we must consider in this day and age as well is plastic waste. The environment is teetering on the brink of being extinct. Uh, if we carry on going in the direction that we're currently going. And film photography obviously produces a lot of plastic waste, whether it's the canister that the film comes in, or if you're having scans done from the film, the film gets discarded itself as well. So in terms of that, I think that digital photography is definitely safer from an environmental perspective as well. So that's basically a long-winded way of saying that my conclusion is, yes, I love shooting film, and I'm definitely not going to leave this camera on the shelf for another five years. 
I'm going to keep using it as much as I can but at the same time I'm not going to neglect my digital photography and I'm going to try and create some of my own camera presets based on film that I put through this camera so then I can balance the look myself rather than going with somebody else's intent because I think that when you do use presets it's often not cheating but you are losing some of your own intent you may think well that look looks absolutely fantastic on that picture and it's the perfect one that I intended to, for it to go for but sometimes like the comparisons that I showed in this video between the Fuji Superior on this camera and the preset using this camera it was quite a bit off and I did have to do a bit of tweaking so film photography is brilliant but digital photography is as well and ultimately it comes down to how much time you have how much money you have and whether you would like that filmic look in reality or whether you'd just like to emulate it and have a play around. Either way, I just love taking pictures with both of these cameras and they'll continue to play a part in my camera bag I'm sure for many years to come. Thank you very much for watching. I know this video has gone on a bit longer than some of my other videos usually do. But if you have enjoyed it, then please like it and subscribe to the Yorkshire Photo Watch YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And I'd love to hear what you think about film photography and film emulation presets. So please put those in the comments section below. Until the next video, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.